Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. And Nene got Bravo, or Bravo got Nene smoking out the window. Girl started off so tender, so sweet. But now she got me smoking out the window. Yes, true entertainment. Bravo. Uh, NBC Universal Studios True Entertainment Truly Original Got Nene smoking out the window Yes, honey Nene going around here Spinning 45, 35 Up in Tiffany's Yes Got her boyfriend on his Knees Yes Trying to figure out What Bravo did to her but Bravo belongs to everybody, everybody. Yes, and I had, I tell you, get that silk sonic tape. Uh, he, I think it was Bootsy Collins who put uh, Pac Anderson, uh, and uh, Bruno Mars together for them to make that sensational song. Yes, Nene is smoking out her. Range Rover, cause she don't know where she went wrong. She done lost her house, even though people said she don't want to live in the house no more because uh, Greg died there. Yeah, really. How many of us still live in our houses that loved ones have passed in? The ones that didn't want to pass in the hospital. Okay, so we brought them home. Then she lost her swag stores. I think it was about three of them, right? Right. Then she lost the Real Housewives of Atlanta role of being the head HBIC. A right hand bitch in charge for the people in the back. And I know Greg is turning over in his grave. Or better yet, he probably up there singing with the angels, honey. He's that Nene. Yes, Nene has gotten deep wrong in the house that she say she, say she built. That's the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm like... What kind of mess are you smoking? <laughs> what kind of ooh wee are you smoking, Nene? You are part of a cast, okay? Part of a cast, like pieces of the puzzle. All right, you need many facets to put anything together. You sitting around there playing with a young boy and an old cat. And both of them ain't paying you no mind. No mind. So you don't have a man either. Because he won't even sit there and take a photograph with you. When somebody's photographing y'all. He's sitting up there looking at the flow. Or his phone. I have no idea. You have no friends. Remember you did have a friend in Cynthia. But you don't have that anymore. Okay. And you don't have that little uh, young tenderoni over there. You just had him for a little bit. And it probably was a photo op. Nothing more, nothing less. But you over there still up in 43, 53,000 feet in the air. Don't know if you're still in Paris, France. Or you're in, um, what do you call it, Spain somewhere. Okay, or maybe you're in Jerusalem. But you got a first class seat flying up in those friendly skies, honey. Hope you make it back safely to all the mess you left here in Atlanta. Okay, you were getting sponsorships trying to, uh, to be on, you know, show like the uh, real, but we know that's being canceled. So you don't even have that outlet to appear anymore. But you said they were drying up because somebody trying to drive you out of business. Yes. You remember that was the guy Nene's supposed to be dating in Baltimore when Greg was still alive. This, that, and the third, allegedly. Okay, but you need, you know, Nene has always been theatrical. Okay, theatrical, but she can't even pull herself out of this phone. Yes, Nene is smoking out the window because she's going down, and it's her fault that she slid from grace. 
slid from grace. Yes, she thinking she can order people around, make them do what she want them to do. do. But no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. It was not your show. Now, you did have opportunities with the swag store, but you couldn't even keep that afloat. You couldn't even keep that afloat. And I think you had three of them. We'll still see what you do with underneath the allowance because if you ain't putting money in to pay payroll, you won't have that much longer either. That's why you have gotten to the point where you say, I need to sue somebody. And I'm going to sue everybody. And you might as well have put Kim Zosiak in there to be sued as well because you show sure flossing her name around your whole built-up lawsuit. Okay, and then you said you had an opportunity, but Wendy Williams' husband, Calvin Hunter, took that opportunity from you to have a talk show. I don't know, but you were best buddies with Andy Cohen. Okay, you remember the gay guy that you called a racist? Yes, you did. Okay, and I think you called him a crackhead, too, allegedly. But then when you're, you and Kim with the bosom buddies right there, you just had to be blonde because I guess you feel blondes have more fun. <laughs> but you know, you, you, did you hear about the other thing, Nene, when they says dumb blondes, okay? Dumb blondes. Huh. But anyway, or that thing where they say you having a blonde moment because they really felt that blondes were stupid. All right? And you did not prove them wrong by putting up that uh, blonde bombshell wig okay but that's kim kim you said with your friend you said she would want you had wanted to be her and she wanted to be you i don't know should y'all have traded places who knows okay but you saying a lot about uh kim zosiak in your lawsuit but you're not even putting her in the forefront of suing her as well as the um the place you uh work your employer okay if Greg only knew. If only he knew. But anyway, in 2020, Nene claims she was forced out of the house that she built. Mm-hmm. Nene believes she built the house of the Real Housewives over there. Yeah, she built that ship. That ship. She says she would burn the shit down if she cannot, what do you call it, prevail with her lawsuit. She would burn it down because she made it so she can destroy it. I'm like, Nene, have you really lost your mind? Part one, go look at therapy because you need it. You're going to need it now and you're going to need it later, baby girl. You did not build nothing. You contributed to the Real Housewives of Atlanta and the success. We can give you that. But did you put any money down? Okay, did you invest any of your money, all right, money or good credit? Because you can get financing with good credit. Did you put anything down? Were you having a seat at the boardroom? Were you, how you call it, wrapping your arms, shaking your fists, doing what it need to do up in the boardroom when they be making shit happen? Were you at any of those meetings, Nene? Did you have executive producer where it really was a full-fledged title and not something empty as most of these people are getting now? Like Portia Williams, she was an EP executive, <laughs> executive producer, but she wasn't doing shit. Can I prove it? Sure can. I sure can. Because did y'all not see the debacle, man, of Portia's Family Matters? <laughs> It was a train wreck, a disaster, horrific. Okay, but we talking about the Real Housewives of Atlanta that Nene claims to fame she built. That's her baby, and she don't trust her baby with anybody. When it's time for her to retire, she would choose the successor. But no, 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 no. NBC Universal had to put their foot down, offer you a friend contract, then want it, get the hell out. Okay, because they own the show. It's all about them. You're just the tools that they use to bring the income in to them. Okay? Got it. Good. All right. Now, in 2008, she was claiming that Kim Zosiak Beerman, allegedly, had said when they were trying to get a little barbecue together that she didn't want to hang around Nene and eat chicken. Well, the last time I checked, 
any southern woman about her grit and gold or she know anything about uh what do you call it southern cooking white folks country bunkins rednecks however you want to look at them they like chicken too nene and they like it fried, dyed, and laid to the side. They like corn on the cob. They even like watermelon. So for you to take offense of anything, Kim had to come out her my way. That shows how you were built. Meaning you did not have tough skin. Because if you really felt that kind of way, while you were getting those checks, you could have been in the boardroom saying, okay, I'm offended. I'm offended that y'all let him go around him saying bad words or discriminatory words racist words and y'all not doing nothing about it i didn't see you talking to no outlet a social media outlet because they would have loved that story and they sure would have been trying to investigate it and i'm talking about our local news stations all right but you didn't do that nene okay in the fifth season nene says kim Mark, new cast member that had just came on. Now, about the fifth season, Cand Candy was, she been on the show. The fifth season, I believe, is when uh, Kenya and Marlo came. So, we might be talking about the third or fourth season. But anyway, uh, whenever Cam and Candy came aboard, called herself stepping up, trying to make it do what it do because of her paychecks rolling in from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You said that Kim Zosier called Candy ghetto. All right. I'm like, okay, well, guess what? From Mars, I've seen, I've been seeing some white folks in the ghetto in the low income sections of the city here in Atlanta as well. So the ghetto is not for brown and black people. Okay. No, even the homeless people, they are Caucasian people out there too. All right, so for you to let Kim ruffle your little feathers that way too, and you didn't get it straightened out when you were in good relationships with the organization that employed you for so long, that gave you the benefits of acting and being seen as a little star out there, okay? I'm just saying, when all this shit was happening, and you were saying that Kim was perpetual perpetuating a racial stereotype by questioning whether Candy needed a swimming pool. Wasn't that Candy Bird's fight her plight to bear? Not yours, Nene, because I don't think I've ever seen you take up for Candy Burris Tucker on any level, at any point in time, at any referencing. I uh, saw you try to tear her down, heard it, seen it on the show. Both of y'all got fussy. Cause Candy don't like nobody talking real loud to her. She said that's a trigger. She be ready to get them hands to going in the air and making contact, which we all know. Can't ain't about that life because she had a perfect opportunity in one time, but she didn't do nothing with it. So we're just going to say, okay, maybe she need the cameras off of her. Maybe she don't need no phones uh, being filming what she needs to do. Maybe she like doing stuff behind closed doors. And that's how she get down. I don't know. But again. Wasn't that something that you could have. Told Ken on a download. Don't get too close to this shit. Because she said this that and the third. Or better yet. Pull them both together. Because see Candy even. Uh, collaborated with her. Wrote a song with her. Made money off Candy. And didn't didn't pay Candy. She felt like nah, I'm, I'm gonna pay them just that when everything was good and they were working. Once the song got uh, published out there, it got put out there. Kim didn't want to pay Candy nothing, and Kim and Kim didn't pay Candy nothing. Now Candy could have took it legally and did make it do what it do, but she was making cute coin at the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She didn't want to, you know, rough us too many spellers because she didn't know how. Or if Kim had pulled. And Ken ain't about losing not no type of money. Now. Personally. <laughs> I 
I had to get the law on Kim Zosiac. Okay, Beerman. Whether it was a verbal thing going on or it was written down. Okay, and I just lost a piece of paper. She would have gave me that money or that song would not have sought the light of day. Okay, and if so, I would be getting revenue from it. But Ken, it was new at the game. Trying to work with a co-worker and trying to, you know, elevate her in something that she could help her contribute with because you know candy was going on i think uh tours with her because um really i guess that was a club party type of um single she had wrote for Kim, um kim and i know she was at a couple of the um gay communities activities and she performed that show tardy for the party and kim is just she, she is not coordinated at all because candy was trying to tell her you know you need to be a showman type person you need to be showcasing your body and your talents or trying to do a little two-step here or there and kim was so uncoordinated she couldn't do it she couldn't do it lord but it just is what it is all right then we have nene state that kim used the n-word all right when referring to her and the other cast members now why did you not tell the other cast members when the shit was going down it went collectively meaning you and the other ladies that were offended to the boardroom and said look a here i don't gave you several offenses that this chick has made towards me Okay, now I'm bringing the collective many with me who are saying the same damn thing at the same damn time. Can you do something about this or do we need to take it a little further, meaning over your heads, okay? But none of that was displayed. So I'm still trying to figure out what the hell you got going on. Because again, I don't think none of those current women that are on the Real Housewives of Atlanta are going to show up at your doorstep and help you defend your cause, your plight. You're tearing down the organization that they are still trying to make their money in to support their livelihoods. So, Nene, <laughs> part two, again, Bravo have got you in a calandrum where you're smoking out the window. Simply put, you don't know which way to go. You don't know if you really made a mistake or not. And you're not going to like the ending. So you got to get the ooh-wee system so you won't panic too much. Because I'm sure you're having sleep problems. You're having a lot of anxiety. Because you really don't know which way it could go. Really, you don't know. All right. But again, I said, hey, when you set that little kitty cat out there. When you set that match to the Bravo stage, it has gone up into flames. Whether or not you get caught in the crossfire, that's neither here nor there at this point. Because you thought uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta was your baby. Okay? You thought you had pool. And then the real execs had to come and remind you who they were they had to introduce themselves back to you because evidently you had bumped your head and forgot who owns who and i say it again for the people in the back who owns who that's a big ass organization with powerful men and women behind them you step to them they paid you for services rendered and they politely demoted you and told you where the door was because they didn't like your stank attitude anymore nene so you didn't try to get a new attitude so they gave your friend contract they told you to think about it but that was just a nice way of them saying you're fired pretty much you're fired keep it moving it's not a this is not a what do you call it a debatable thing this is not a union contract thing. No, you're in Atlanta and it's like status quo. We want you today, but you could be gone tomorrow depending on how I feel. Okay? It's a, a state where it's not for the people that need to be employed. Nope, it's more so geared to the business owners. So business people don't have to keep you a part of their entity, Nene. It's a sad thing. That's why you were supposed to use this platform when you were in good 
cahoots with them, when you were in good standing with them, when you were their number one dog, okay? You should have been building everything. But you losing everything. House gone, husband gone, uh, department store boutiques are gone. Uh, your job at the Real Housewives of Atlanta, gone. Never to be resurrected again. Other future potential job openings, more than likely gone. Nolan Boyd, wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. Ah, but you still reign. But I see you as the fallen queen, okay, of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Never to be thought of again. But that's just my story. That's the one I'm sticking with. We'll be doing part three. This was part two, okay? Meaning the fall from grace is what this was, okay? And that's all I got for this video, guys. Y'all get down in those comments. Let me know what y'all thought about Nene and her actions thus far. And be polite in the chat because I know a lot of people are going to be like, you don't know what you're talking about. She built this. She, she did it. No, if she didn't have her own money from the start of this building of something, she didn't own nothing. She was a busy worker just like the other employees. Okay. I'm just really keeping it real. She has no friends around her. You know, Cynthia was her ace boon coon. The one that was always up her ass. The one that Nene could do no wrong. Lost that friendship. Messing with young boys. Messing with married men. Flying 53,000 feet up in the air. Thinking she could run away from what she sat here and set off. Nah, you got to take that first, cl first class plane back to Georgia. Not the train. Not the midnight train to Georgia. No, not that one that Gladys Knight had. You know, stock and barrel and hold on. No, we need you to take the first thing smoking. I believe that's Delta. Okay, Delta Airlines. Tell them to bring you back. Don't go to California or nowhere else. Bring you back. So you can handle this uh, mess you don't put yourself into. Okay? You started it. Now it's time for you to recognize it, reckon with it, and finish it. All right? And them uh, men you messing with, they ain't going to be nowhere to be found. I'll just let you know right now. They ain't going to be nowhere to be found, girl. They're going to be on toss to the wind and went on to the next victim. But we'll see y'all next video. Y'all take it easy. Be breezy.